Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another Serverless Saturday tutorial, and I hope you're all doing well. Today's video will be the first part in a two-part tutorial for setting up an image or file uploading API pipeline using Amazon S3, API Gateway, and AWS Lambda. And of course, we'll also be using the serverless framework as well as GitHub Actions for our continuous integration and delivery pipeline. So hopefully you'll find this video useful. And of course, if you do and you want to see more videos just like this one, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel an incredible amount. So to get started, in the first part of this tutorial, we'll be setting up the S3 bucket by writing the bucket deployment configuration as well as the GitHub Actions workflow. Um, but before we do any of that, we're going to go ahead and head over to the AWS Management Console um, and head over to IAM, or Identity and Access Management, and we're going to create a new user. So for this tutorial, we'll just call it uh, YouTube. Um, oh, sorry, not YouTube. Uh, we'll call it uh, S3 file upload user, and we're going to check off programmatic access. And we're going to actually attach existing policies um, directly. Um, so specifically, we want to attach um, IAM full access. This gives us permission to IAM uh, uh, resources. Um, and we also want to check off um, Amazon S3 um, because we will be needing that in this tutorial. And we also need um, oops, Amazon API gateway administrator as well as uh, push to Cloud CloudWatch logs. And we also need um, cloud formation. Um, this allows us to actually deploy our project using the serverless framework. And lastly, we need um, the Lambda full access. And of course, in a real scenario or production scenario, um, you, you likely wouldn't want to check off full access for all of these resources um, for the sake of security and whatnot. Um, so ideally, you would only choose the permissions um, that you need by perhaps creating a custom policy. But for the sake of this tutorial and keeping things simple, uh, we'll just check off full access for everything that we need. Um, we'll, we'll click next tags, and of course we don't need any tags, um, so we'll just review everything um, and check off if everything is correct. And once that's done, we'll click create user, and awesome. So now we've reached the credentials page. And once again, uh, these this is the only time that we'll have access to uh, the secret access key um, in the set of credentials, so we'll make sure to make a note of it. Um, specifically, we'll actually head over to our GitHub repo, and we're going to check uh, click into settings and secrets. And we're going to go ahead and add the secrets so that we can set up our deployment pipeline. Um, so the access key ID is this one, I believe. Yes. Um, and of course, if you have watched my other video, which is the um, video about oops, um, video about setting up a basic serverless Lambda uh, using serv the serverless framework as well as GitHub Actions, this step might seem a bit redundant. Um, so we'll just quickly go over this. But if you haven't checked out that video, please do make sure to check it out. Um, we go through most of this a bit more in detail. Um, I'll attach a link below in the description as well. Um, anyway, so once that is attached, we can go ahead and actually write our code. So I'm going to use VS Code here. Um, it's just my editor of choice. And um, we're going to first set up the GitHub Actions workflow. And to do so, we'll have to write our configuration file in uh, the dot GitHub um, uh, workflows folder. So we'll go ahead and create that. Oops, that is not my intention. I'm going to delete that actually. Um, so we actually need it to be in a folder called workflows. So I'll create that. And after that, uh, since we're working on a main branch, so I'll name it after the branch. So main.yaml. Um, and for this tutorial, I actually have everything configured correctly um, um, just to speed things up a bit. So I'm going to paste it right ahead here. Um, Hopefully this is big enough. Um, anyway, so uh, I won't go too much in detail about what each step is doing. Uh, most of it is commented at all, and you can check out the source code in the description below as well. Um, but basically, this workflow will help us uh, check out into our project, first of all, and then install any necessary dependencies. And lastly, ultimately, uh, run serverless deploy to deploy our project uh, to AWS. Um, and yeah. Uh, after that, we can uh, set up a our serverless.yaml file, which is um, the bulk of this tutorial, actually. Um, so after um, we've created the serverless.yaml file, we'll go ahead and set up a um, field called service. Um, and this will be the name of our service. So we'll just call it um, S3 uh, file uploader, maybe. Um, go ahead and name it whatever you wish to. Uh, name it. Um, and after that, we want to specify the provider. And um, for this tutorial, we'll be using AWS. 
so the name would be AWS, and the runtime we will be using Node.js, and the latest version supported by uh, AWS for Node.js is 12.x currently, so we'll specify that. Um, this stage is currently a development stage, so we'll leave it like that. And the region, um, I'm just going to use US West-1 in this tutorial, and that is pretty much it for the provider section. So um, one thing that we want to do actually is also specify a custom variable, um, which, will, which will hold the name of the bucket, which you can reference throughout um, various locations in the serverless YAML file. And you will be able to see how useful that becomes later on in uh, part one and part two as well. But to do that, we have this custom field that we can um, attach um, and we can name any variables that we want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable called file upload uh, bucket name. And uh, a special trick that I, or syntax that I like to follow is by using the service name first as a prefix and just saying that it's a bucket. And um, lastly, I'm gonna attach the development stage as well. So this could be like um, development uh, or like dev or dash prod. Um, in this case it would be dash dev. And the reason why I like to do this is so that um, when you have multiple buckets in a given AWS account, it becomes a lot easier to differentiate which bucket belongs to which project and which stage um, that in that project as well. So um, this is just the convention I like to follow. But of course, feel free to follow whatever convention that perhaps your team or you would like to prefer. Um, anyway, uh, lastly, we want to configure the actual S3 bucket. Um, so there is a field in the serverless.yaml framework that called the resources field. And in this is what we'll be using today. Um, they, we have to type it twice. Uh, I'm not too sure why it's just the, it's the way it is, but um, the second one is capitalized. So uh, just a small detail, but definitely important to pay attention to. Um, and here we can actually specify the name of our S3 bucket. So I'm going to call it uh, all bucket. And this is just for serv the serverless framework to know. Um, and it will not be the actual name of the bucket that we can that we will be referencing later on in our code. Um, and of course, this is going to be a bucket, so we'll uh, specify the type as AWS S AWS um, S3 uh, bucket, and we'll specify the additional properties, which includes, um, of course, the bucket name. And this is where we are able to actually use the custom variable by doing uh, following the serverless.yaml syntax of dollar um, curly brace uh, self colon custom dot and the variable name that we have declared. Uh, so file upload bucket name. And this will, uh, when we run serverless deploy or basically uh, the GitHub actions run serverless deploy, um, it will automatically take this name um, and store it here so that our bucket name is actually the rendered, the complete version of this um, formatted string. Um, so yeah, there's that. And one more thing that I want to add actually is the access control field. And basically this allows us to um, specify whether the field, the objects in our S3 bucket are public visible or private. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it as public read, which means that anybody can actually read or view the files in our S3 bucket. And I just, and we'll see later on why I wanted to do it this way, but for the, like a production use case or any other use case, really, you ultimately want to keep it um, private uh, with a capital P, um, just so that other people can't view your files in S3. Um, randomly because that would be a huge security breach um, but yeah i'm going to keep it as public read for now but just keep in mind of that really big warning um, they should pretty much never use public read um, and yeah that's pretty much it for setting up the serverless.yaml framework um, configuration file for deploying our s3 bucket which is the first step in this tutorial um, and i'm going to go ahead and commit this project and once the github actions workflow completes we'll go check out if our bucket has deployed successfully so we are back and our deployment has finally completed. Um, but before we move forward, I would just like to point out that I actually made a slight mistake earlier um, with our deployment and it actually failed the first time. And if you were look, looking really carefully, um, when I copied the access key ID, I actually accidentally copied the space character and it was giving an authentication error um, so that the serverless uh, framework could not connect to AWS and it was causing an authentication error so that I could not deploy uh, this project. Um, so yeah, just uh, feel free to learn from a mistake there. Um, I didn't catch that earlier, but hopefully you'll uh, make note of that for when you actually try out this project for yourself. Um, anyway, so we can move forward and check uh, check into our Amazon S3 bucket that we've deployed. So as you can see here, um, we've deployed it and it does follow the syntax that we've described earlier, um, which takes the project service name uh, as the prefix um, and dash bucket and then dash the stage, which is dev. 
And yeah, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. Um, there's nothing much in the bucket right now um, because we haven't added anything yet, but uh, that wraps up part one. And in part two, we'll be setting up the actual API using API Gateway, as well as writing up the Lambda function, which ultimately helps process and upload the files to our S3 bucket. So stay tuned.